Hi, I'm uh, Nick Asta. I'm one of the deputy chiefs with the Barrington Countryside Fire Protection District. We're a 48 square mile community, mostly rural, uh, just north of Chicago, uh, really just south of Wisconsin. Again, we cover 48 square miles. We don't have a lot of fire hydrants in our community. Most of our operations are rural operations. Uh, we're mostly a residential community uh, with large homes in excess of 10 to 15,000 square foot homes uh, that do not have fire hydrants anywhere near them. And the, the type of structures that we have to deal with are large uh, residential structures. And a lot of our fires have been started on the external of the homes, uh, whether it be by lightning or some sort of contractor. Uh, the ability for us to get large aerial devices into these uh, driveways, those single lane, regular residential driveways, um, has been very challenging for us over the years. As we were looking at building our next rig, we needed to figure out how to get some sort of aerial water uh, to these houses. It allows for the first in crews to start mitigating the incident um, without having to stretch a lot of lines. So what we, what we did was we went out and we looked around and we wound up with, here at Pierce on a conceptual trip and we found the sky boom. We looked at numerous different vehicles but again, reach was gonna be a very important part of this vehicle. Uh, this vehicle is a Pierce Sky Boom. It's a 61 foot boom with a 1500 GPM pump. The vehicle overall is less than 36 feet long with a wheelbase of under 210 inches. So in order to make the turns and get into the driveways, this, this is something that's going to work for us. Um, we're gonna treat this vehicle like an engine first and have the aerial master stream be, be available should we need it. We run a 3,000 gallon tender along with this vehicle. And what, one of the things that we did spec into this vehicle was an extremely large foam system so that we can flow enough foam to utilize the water on the vehicle and the water in the tender that will be nursing this vehicle. Um, we did put a generator on the vehicle because again, once we get this vehicle up to the house that's on fire, we're not getting any other vehicles up there. It's not like your typical residential community where we can line the street with a bunch of vehicles and all the toolboxes and all the tools. When we get there, this vehicle is gonna be the one vehicle up there and everything that we need to utilize, we're gonna to have to get off this vehicle. So having a generator on the vehicle is gonna be a, an absolute asset to the crews working should they need lighting, should they need to run other tools off that generator. Um, again, very short wheelbase, the, the drivers will treat this as an engine. They just got to worry about that height. Uh, we're running only about 11, point, 11 feet 4 inches, which our other vehicle, which is more of a squad pumper, is about the same height. So we built this vehicle to fit into our community, um, and we believe it's going to be an absolute asset for the Barrington Countryside Fire Protection District. As we work ourselves around the vehicle, um, again, full custom, we have cabinets, uh, all of our vehicles are going to be built with, with the tools in the same areas, engineer's compartment, air packs, extinguishers, um, and the way this one played out, it's going to work out very well for us. One of the other things that we did, because we're 48 square miles, we have two fire stations, it's a long time between the cavalry showing up to help that first in crew. We actually spec'd in a, a multi-camera system to the sky boom which allows for one person, the engineer, to lift the boom, start applying water to the fire, and to be able to see where that water's going. So we, no matter where the boom is, once it's out of the cradle, they should be able to see where the boom is and where they're gonna apply that water. It's something we haven't done yet, um, and we're very, very excited to see how that's gonna work for us. One of the other options was, again, standard, you're gonna have controls for the boom in the rear, we added a second set of controls at the engineer's panel so that the engineer can flow the water and operate the boom at the same time. With that, we have the screens at both places. So wherever someone's operating this boom, they'll be able to see what's going on from the tip. We'll work around, I mean, your standard class A pumper, ladders, pike poles, um, all, all, the, all the tools will be laid out. We'll, we'll build this with a lot of the extrication equipment. We have, again, 48 square miles, rural roads with uh, high speed zones. We have some pretty serious crashes in our fire district. So this vehicle will be a multi-purpose vehicle, including ALS response, all of our firefighter, all of our uh, officers, chiefs, 
and firefighters are also paramedics. So this will be an ALS vehicle uh, first. It'll be obviously the aerial master screen for the fire district and it'll have enough extrication equipment to start a full-fledged uh, vehicle extrication. We can work ourselves around trying to get as much compartment space as possible as we went through the conceptual build. We walked the floor, we found some options that we hadn't seen before. We added these compartments on the side here. It wasn't in the original spec, but when we saw them on the floor, we said this is something that we'll be able to utilize. You know, cones, stuff more for the vehicle accidents. We do have a bumper line. One of the nice things about the Pierce option was, right now the vehicles we have, we have to take the line, the hard suction off to get to that hose. They've allowed us to deploy our bumper without having to remove that hard suction. So if we have a car fire or a small rubbish fire and we don't want to have to pull this off, it's a much quicker deployment to get going. And then the last thing, again, as we're, as we're utilizing the camera here, if you go up, you'll see that there's two cameras up at the boom. That should allow us to have a visual, no matter where this boom is placed, on how we're applying the water to the fire. So that pretty much covers what the, uh, how the spec went for having some unique new assets for the Barrington Countryside Fire Protection District. I want to thank you for listening. Have a great day.